Hi, I'm Doug the Bee Guy, and today we're going to learn about how and when to add honey supers during the honey harvest season. We're going to open this beehive up and see how many bees are in here and look at this super that's already on here and see how full it is. First thing I'm going to do is uh, add some smoke to this hive, just uh, calm the bees a little bit. It's a really nice day out today. It's about 75 degrees and sunny, so the bees really don't care that I'm even there. Uh, I probably don't even need to do it, but it's just uh, one of those things I do, just in case. Keeps the uh, guard bees from getting excited. Then we're going to open the hive and check the status of that super that I added. Um, it's probably only been a couple of weeks since I added it, but we have a pretty heavy flow going on now, so I just want to check to see how much the bees have actually filled that one. Uh, and gives you an idea whether you really need to add another honey soup or not. The cover's stuck to the hive a little bit here. I was struggling. It looks like the inner cover, that piece of canvas, is a little short, and you can see the propolis on the lid there on the front and the back, so it was kind of glued down. So I was having a little bit of a problem. Now I'm going to pull back the canvas and just give a look down inside the honey super there and see uh, how much they filled. This is actually comb honey on this one. Uh, it's an old uh, kind of a comb honey system that you can't even buy anymore. And I had some um, left over and so I decided to use it on this hive um, just to see what it would do. So here you can see... It's not full of honey just yet, and this is comb honey, but it's getting pretty close. And so I think by putting that other super in there, they'll be able to bring in more nectar and finish this up. Um, so I think we're uh, we're ready for another super. I'm going to close this honey super back up and uh, pry it off from the hive so I can look into the hive there and see what's going on. When you're prying off your supers from your queen excluders, you want to make sure to just uh, pry on the edge so that you don't spread the uh, queen excluders open if they're metal ones because you can make a, make a gap too big and then the queen can actually sneak through there. It doesn't take much if you bend those... Uh, bars on your metal queen excluders. Hi, I'm Doug the Bee Guy. And I'm Julie, the beekeeper's wife, and I'm holding a quick guide. You're gonna find a quick guide in this video in the description. We've also created two other quick guides for our other videos, and I will put those videos in the card. We're creating quick guides as for the new videos that you can download, and when you put them all in a book, you'll have a nice course of beekeeping tips and tricks. So collect them all. <laughs> and as always, be extraordinary. I'm going to set this honey super over here on this overturned top and uh, so that it's up off the ground. There's tons of bees inside of it and I don't want to crush any of them. So I'll just set it up here on this top. And as we can see, the uh, single brood chamber is totally packed with bees. I'm going to give it a little smoke here and settle them down after I rip their hive apart. They're a little uh, wound up. Here I'm just taking a close look at the uh, seams of bees and the frames just to see what I can see. What I can see is uh, lots of bees and I can blow in here and I can push the bees around and see that there's quite a bit of brood and I can see quite a bit down in there. I don't need to rip this queen excluder off and disturb them any. I'm just going to check this out for a few minutes and then I'm going to put the other honey super on. Okay, now we're going to put the Honey Super on. This is a, a box of nine frames of drawn comb uh, from a previous year. I'm going to set it right there. I'm doing what's called bottom supering. And uh, you can top super if you want. I like to bottom super, which means I put the new super as close to the uh, brood box as possible. Here I'm just uh, aligning the frame. Since there's nine in here, you want to make sure that they're evenly spaced. Uh, otherwise, you can get uh, 
crazy burr comb and stuff like that. Um, I run nine frames. Um, it makes a little bit more honey than ten, so I'm just making sure that they're lined up and I'm cleaning off the tops and aligning them. Um, these had been previously taken out and cleaned. So what bottom supering does is it allows the bees to easily move the nectar from the brood box into the honey super and because it's closer and that's the theory that they will move it up and then at nighttime they can move that nectar even further up into the other honey super but they want to get it out of the brood box as fast as possible so that they can uh, not be crowded uh, not start swarming and have plenty of room for the queen to lay so i like to do the bottom super now it's time to take the original super and put it on top it has all the bees and all the honey in it, and they will immediately go down into the other one and start cleaning it. The bees will come up from the bottom and start cleaning it. It's pretty clean from last year, but, you know, they still want to groom it, and they'll start drawing the white wax on the very edge. Well, now it's time to put the cover back on this hive and call it done and let the bees do their work. Um, one thing to notice is that I do have um, entrances and all of my honey supers. I've drilled a hole in there so they can actually go in there without going up through the whole hive body and in through the queen excluder. You will notice that some bees that aren't bringing in pollen and water to the bottom, they will go directly into the upper entrances and bring the nectar and it's a little bit faster for them to do that. 